The latest Proton Saga is Proton's best-selling model and is also the company's most affordable model. So with these two factors in mind, I decided to ask Proton for a review unit to see just what the fuss is all about. So here we are. This is our review of the Proton Saga. This particular variant of the Saga is the range topping Premium S model and it comes with a number of distinct differences including this ethereal bow, finished in red, the Infinite Weave grille design, these daytime running lights which are switched off right now because the car is switched off, black top side mirrors and get this keyless entry on an A7 sedan. So if I unlock the car, the side mirror will fold out and if I lock it, it will fold back in and surprisingly enough this is a relatively rare feature especially in the sub 100,000 ring range and this is only a 44,800 ring car moving on to the side we have these 15 inch alloy wheels with a dual tone finish and i'm okay with the design i just don't love the fact that the silver parts are just those because it gives the appearance that this is a skinny tire which it is not on the back of the Saga, you get this black out garnish for the Proton script to sit on and it does give the car a pretty good look in my opinion. Overall, the Saga has a nice silhouette and I do think it's one of the better looking A7 sedans in the market now, except for the wheel design I suppose but that's just me because after all, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Now that we're done with the exterior of the car, let's go inside and see what we have. So, you've got this nice steering wheel with a leather finish, seat upholstery with fabric and leather combination, and you've got even this nice matte red aircon garnish that is again exclusive to the Premium S trim. There's also this 7-inch display which is a little bit dim for my liking but it's alright I suppose and to top it off, this does have Android and Apple connectivity but not via Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Instead, it uses a mirroring app called Easy Connection and it does work but controls are still from your phones and the, this is just mirroring the display. In terms of build quality of the interior, the Saga uses a lot of hard plastic throughout the interior which isn't really a surprise because this is still just an A7 sedan. But even though it doesn't feel premium, it is by no means a cheap feeling interior because it still feels adequate in my opinion. Now let's move on to the back of the car to see how it's like to be a passenger in the Proton Saga. If you lock the car, and you left your key out here, it will beep to let you know that you know the car is still running, I suppose. Anyway, let's go to the back here. The driver's seat is adjusted to my driving position and as you can see, I have a lot of leg room which should be comfortable even on longer car rides. That being said, I am not particularly tall as I am only about 165 cm, so use that information as you will. While I appreciate the fact that I got pretty good amount of leg room, I don't like the fact that my legs are raised up this high and I don't get a lot of thigh support so it can be a bit tiring on longer car rides. But at the very least, my phone won't be tired. I mean, <laughs> it can be charged up because it does have these two USB-A ports for charging needs for two passengers on the back, which is great. And that's the back seat of the Proton Saga. Now, let's move on to something more exciting. The driving impressions of the Saga. So how is it like to drive the Proton Saga? Well, not surprisingly, it's a very fun car to drive. After all, Proton is known for their excellent ride and handling and this applies to even the Saga. Its ride quality for one is very very good, it can soak up road bumps very well and in many ways it rides like a bigger car and not just an A7 sedan which this car is. I'm also quite impressed with the sound insulation of the Saga. I'm doing about 80 km per hour right now and as you can see it still sounds reasonably quiet. There is a little bit of tire roar and wind noise but for the most part, especially for an A7 sedan, the sound insulation of this car is very impressive. 
The handling of the Saga is also quite good. The steering feels nice and quick and I can even negotiate tight corners with this car quite confidently though I do wish the steering would load up a little bit more for that extra bit of confidence. Under the hood of the Saga is the familiar 1.3 liter engine that outputs 95 PS and 120 Nm of torque. While these figures don't sound very impressive, this is still just an A7 sedan mind you, it feels adequately powerful still for the Saga. I can get to highway speeds reasonably well and from a standstill, this car's acceleration is actually quite surprising. That being said, if I'm going at about 80 to 90 km per hour, trying to overtake at this speed can prove to be a bit of a challenge for the Saga. I partly attribute this to the 4-speed automatic gearbox and not just the one3 liter engine. The thing is, when I put my foot down, it takes a bit of time for the gearbox to downshift. It doesn't feel sluggish or anything like that, but I would say it feels a little bit lazy. For the most part though, I am quite happy with this automatic gearbox and it's much better than the punch CVT found in older Saga models. It's worth noting that this review unit of the Saga still comes with the Hyundai Source 4-speed automatic gearbox and not the new ASIN one that is reportedly found on newer Saga models produced between May to June 2023 and onwards. Without actually trying out that newer gearbox, I can't say just how similar it would be to this particular transmission. But given that Proton did not make any official announcement regarding this part change, I reckon the driving characteristic should be very similar if not identical. Last but certainly not least is the fuel consumption of the Saga. Proton said that this car can go about 15 km per litre but in my testing, I got about 12 km per litre which is not too bad. I say this because I do drive quite spiritedly and I was stuck in a few traffic jams over the past couple of days so 12 km per litre in my opinion is very very good especially for a car this size. After all is said and done, is the Proton Saga worth it? Well, in my opinion, it absolutely is. For only 44,800 ringgit for this range topping premium S model, it has a lot of creature comforts that make it competitive with its rivals and you're getting a lot of car for the money here. Yes, it doesn't get automatic emergency braking like one of its rivals, but if you want a car that drives well, rides well and handles well, these qualities apply to the Saga and in my opinion, not to any other rivals in the A7 sedan market. And that is our review of the latest Proton Saga. If you do like this new review format, do let us know because we're experimenting with this for our car reviews. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and always stay tuned for more good stuff to come here on this channel and nextwave.com.